Now, uh, go over up the top of Excel here, right? You see you've got these tabs here. I've got home, insert, draw, etc. What I want you to move over to is data, okay? Uh, we don't use the data tab all that much, but that's to our detriment. It's extraordinarily powerful. What we're going to use is the, a feature in the data tab to help us use our model to kind of forecast into the future, right? So see how this value here, $1,257.95. It's not that much, I guess, because our deposit is pretty small. What if, what if we wanted $3,000? in that bottom line as the future value instead of the $1,257.95, okay? What if we wanted that? Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. Actually, there's more than two ways. There's three ways. There's three different numbers we could change that could make the future value larger, right? Three different numbers. Anyone want to suggest what the three numbers could be? Ben, give me one of them. The deposit. We could just deposit more than $100 each year, and then hopefully that would get us to 3000 Okay, so the deposit is one. What's another thing we could change? Yeah. Interest. The interest. If we were able to find some like generous bank that had like really risky investments, so it had a higher return, if we could get more than 10%, then potentially we could get up to $3,000, right? There's one last thing we could change, but it's kind of um, implied here. It's not the deposit. It's not the interest rate. Sam. It's how, it's how long we do this for, right? So I could go more than eight years, okay? So let's go, all three of those. Uh, deposit, then interest rate, and then time. That's a good order, right? So remember we're up in the data tab, and the question we're asking is what if we wanted something else? So if you look up here, you might need to widen your Excel window to see the full menu. I literally have a button here that says what if analysis, okay? That's asking the question what if one of these values was different. When I click it, you can see I've got a few options here. The one that I want is goal seek. My goal is $3,000. I'm gonna seek that out by changing certain things. So I hit that and a new thing comes up. It says goal seek. The first thing is, what's your goal, right? So I wanna set, there's a particular cell that I wanna reach something. For me, it's this red value, the future value, okay? So instead of B11, I'm gonna click there and it tells me B9, okay? Set that cell. And what did we want to reach? What was the target we wanted to attain? 3,000. So in this cell that says two value, I'm going to write 3,000, okay? And then the last option is by changing cell. Which cell do you want to adjust, <clears throat> excuse me, to get B9 to $3,000? Now the first thing that Ben suggested was our deposit, right? So deposit in, in what cell? Have a look at the reference. It's D... Four, right? So we can go ahead, click on D4, there it is, okay? Now, just before you hit OK, what is Excel going to do? It's going to start fiddling with D4. It's going to start to iterate different numbers until it gets to 3,000, okay? So I'm going to hit Enter, and you're going to do the same, and I want you to watch the numbers change. It's going to happen really fast, but you'll actually watch the change happen in real time. Did you see it? Blink and you'll miss it, right? It literally tried a bunch of different numbers until it reached a spot that changed the future value to our goal. You following what's going on here? Okay, excellent. So what this means is now, okay, obviously I'm gonna have to deposit $238 every year and you can see how everything changes over time. So that was the first suggestion about change in deposit. Let's undo that, go back to the original 100. What was the next thing that we might change? Interest rate, right? Now, you already know what to do here, right? Let's go to the what if analysis scan, put goal seek. You can tell me what I should put in. Set cell, what number again? D, oh, hold on a second. This is the particular target cell, right? So in the first instance, I'm gonna have to go back to B9, right? Click that again. I need to set the value another time, 3000. Okay, now which part comes next? This is, this is D2, right? This is the interest rate that I want to change, okay? So you go ahead, press enter. Wow, last lesson we looked at that um, credit card interest rate. What was that? It was like 21%, I think is what I gave you. And we thought, whoa, that's ridiculous, okay? I guess what that's telling us is we are not going to find a banking account that's going to do this, okay? All right, so we have used that. What was the last, the third and final thing that we could change that Sam suggested? Remember? 
it's time, the number of deposits that we make. So go ahead, undo that, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we'll go back to 10%. I'm not gonna make that the future value anymore because I actually wanna go further. And instead here, I'm not gonna use goal seeking, right? What you've created here, this model, is what we call a recurrence relation, right? Uh, this formula here that we've got created, it just looks back at the previous number and it just goes again, over and over and over. So all we need to do is just keep this thing going, right? I'm gonna take both of these cells down the bottom, copy that, and then I'm gonna paste it down however far I think I need to go, right? So I'm just gonna do a bunch of different rows here, and then I'm gonna hit paste. Now, I actually didn't know what the actual number would be, um, but you can see, well, it's right there, isn't it? That's where I passed $3,000, so I guess my answer would be at the end of 14 years, or 14 time periods, or whatever it happens to be. Okay, all make sense? All right, happy times.